roxithromycin in prevention of acute coronary syndrome associated with chlamydia pneumonia infection a randomized placebo-controlled trial. Leah Watana W. et al. Introduction the spectrum of clinical syndromes caused by coronary atherosclerosis ranges from asymptomatic disease and stable angina to acute coronary syndrome ACS, which include unstable angina UA, acute myocardial infarction AMI, and sudden cardiac death. The pathophysiology of atherosclerosis involves injury, inflammation, infiltration, degeneration, and thrombosis. The stimulus of an inflammatory response in plaque and systemic inflammation in patients at increased risk for coronary events is unknown. The possibility that infectious agents may directly or indirectly trigger the cascade has been raised recently. Established cardiovascular risk factors such as cigarette smoking, diabetes mellitus, hypertension, and hypercholesterolemia do not fully explain the temporal and geographical causation in the prevalence of coronary heart disease over the past century. Endemic of a potential role of infectious agents in the pathogenesis of atherosclerosis has been reported in several studies. In particular, an infection with chlamydia pneumoniae has been claimed to be associated with atherosclerotic cardiovascular disease in seroepidemiological and angiographically studies. Furthermore, chlamydia pneumoniae has been identified and cultured from atheromatous lesions of coronary arteries and can infect vascular cells in vitro. The organism can also induce atherosclerosis in animal models in the macrolide antibiotic, azithromycin, was shown to prevent accelerated endomyl thickening and cholesterol federapids that had repeated nasal inoculations of chlamydia pneumoniae. Three small secondary prevention trials using macrolide treatment in humans have been presented. Two of them have been promising for the preventive effect of the antibiotic but the other one has a negative result. A randomized placebo-controlled trial was conducted to explore the effect of roxithromycin in secondary prevention of acute coronary syndrome associated with chlamydia pneumonia infection. The aim of the study was to determine whether roxithromycin in addition to conventional therapy would reduce cardiovascular events in patients with the documented acute coronary syndrome. Material and Method Patients Patient recruitment began in October 1998 and was completed by September 2000. A total of 84 consecutive patients with the acute coronary syndrome who satisfied clinical inclusion criteria and were admitted to the ward or attended the outpatient clinic were evaluated. For all patients, clinical history, physical examination, and blood samples for the following determinations were obtained chlamydia pneumonia LGG and BUGA, cholesterol, triglycerides, HDLC. LDLC. The inclusion criteria were as follows age between 40 and 75 years, evidence of acute coronary syndrome Q-wave myocardial infarction ME, non-Q-wave myocardial infarction and unstable angina. The exclusion criteria were as follows left bundle branch block, hepatic failure, renal failure, congestive heart failure and contraindication to macrolide therapy. The primary endpoints were as follows severe recurrent ischemia, acute ME percutaneous transluminal coronary angioplasty PTCA, urgent coronary artery bypass graft cab surgery and cardiac death. Laboratory Methods Serum Chlamydia Pneumonia Specific IG, IgA was determined by ELISA method Sero CP IG IgA test Sabian Diagnostics, Ashdod, Israel. This ELISA method used elementary bodies as test antigen. 50 microliter of a positive control. 3 of 50 microliters of the negative control and 50 microliters of 1 over 105 diluted specimens were added to the microliter strips. The ELISA plate was covered and incubated at 37 degrees Celsius for 1 hour in 100% humidity. After washing 3 times with buffer, 50 microliters of 1 over 300 diluted horseradish peroxidus as HRP was added and conjugated with anti-human immunoglobulin. The plate was covered and incubated again for one hour at 37 degrees Celsius in 100% humidity. After washing three times with the buffer, 100 microliters of tetramethyl benzidine TMB substate was added to stop the reaction. The strips were measured at 450 nanometer for which the positive control absorbance value was greater than 1.00 and the average absorbance value of negative control was greater than 0.01 and less than or equal to 0.40. Total cholesterol, triglycerides, HDLC were measured by using standard enzymatic methods. The LDLC levels were calculated from the Frieda-Weld formula.
study design. This was a double-blind, randomized placebo-controlled trial. After conventional therapy had been started and informed consent had been obtained, the patients were randomly allocated either roxithromycin 150 mg orally twice a day or placebo for 30 days. Follow-up visits were scheduled at day 14, day 30 and day 90 after the start of the study treatment. Random allocation was done according to a computer-generated list. A set of sealed envelopes containing patient codes and study treatment was prepared and stored in a secure place. Statistical Analysis the roxithromycin group and placebo group were compared according to baseline characteristics in a descriptive way. The proportion of test was employed to compare lipid profiles. The proportion of patients experiencing an adverse event was compared between the roxithromycin and placebo group by use of the chi-square test. The odds ratio or for adverse cardiovascular events in each group was calculated by EPINFO 6.04 Center for Disease Control, Atlanta, Georgia. A p-value of less than 0.05 was regarded as a significant level. Results There were no significant differences between the two groups with regard to age, sex, risk factors and lipid profiles Table 1. Anti-chlamydian ammonia was positive in 2455.8% of 43 patients who were treated with roxithromycin and 2356.1% of 41 patients in the placebo group. With regard to anti-chlamydian ammonia, 2046.5% of 43 patients who received roxithromycin and 1331.7% of 41 patients in the placebo group were positive. After three months, of the patients participating in the roxithromycin group, 17 adverse cardiovascular events occurred 10 between day 0 and day 30 and 7 between day 31 and day 90. Table 1. Baseline Characteristics Lipid Profiles, Anticene Ammonia LGG and IgA In the placebo group, 16 events occurred 13 between day 0 and day 30 and 3 between day 31 and day 90. Table 2 shows the type of cardiovascular events that occurred in both groups. There was no significant difference between the patients receiving roxithromycin and the patients receiving placebo. The prevalence of anti-chlamydian ammonia and IgA were almost identical in the roxithromycin and placebo groups. The risk factors between the two groups were also not significantly different. The composite of clinical cardiovascular events that occurred within three months in the roxithromycin group was 17 versus 16 events in the placebo group. The distribution of events was also generally similar in the two groups. Table 2. Cardiac events that occurred from day 0 to day 90. Discussion recent data suggested that chronic bacterial infections involved in the genesis of ischemic heart disease IHD, in particular, C. pneumonia infection. It may be involved both by a direct mechanism of colonization and atherosclerotic plaque instability and by an indirect mechanism of activation of inflammation. Two recent randomized studies about the treatment of C. pneumonia infection in IHD reported that treatment with macrolide antibiotics azithromycin. Roxithromycin could reduce adverse cardiovascular events. The study of the Gupta et al. showed that azithromycin treatment of C. pneumonia positive patients reduced the risk of adverse cardiovascular events during an 18 month follow up period. In addition, Gerfinkel et al. also reported on a pilot antibiotic trial from Argentina 202 patients presenting with unstable angina or non Q wave me were randomized on hospital admission to roxithromycin 150 mg twice daily or placebo for 30 days. They found that roxithromycin could reduce morbidity and mortality during a one-month period. These studies suffered from the small number of patients and a small number of cardiac events, poor characterization of patients, and short follow-up. One randomized, placebo-controlled trial study academic reported by Anderson et al. showed study designs contrast with those earlier trials in several ways such as a much larger sample 300 patients gave more intensive antibiotic treatment 2.5 grams of azithromycin over three months. However, they did not confirm a dramatic early reduction in clinical events 9 in the azithromycin group versus 7 in the placebo group. The present study is the first randomized, placebo-controlled for secondary prevention antibiotic trial in Thailand. The study design was similar to Gerfinkel et al. but the result was different especially the number of cardiac events. In the Roxy's pilot study, 
cardiac events occurred in only 14.6% 1496 in the roxithromycin group and 8.7% 892 in the placebo group. On the other hand, in the present study the cardiac events occurred more often than in the Roxy's pilot study, cardiac events occurred in 39.5% 1743 in the roxithromycin group and in the placebo group it occurred 39.0% 1641. This means that the patients in the present study seem to be more severe than the patients in the study of Gerfinkel et al. However, cardiac events that occurred in the study of Gupta et al. were nearly the same as in our study 30% in the non-randomizing group, 25% in the placebo group and 15% in the C-pneumonia intermediate titer group. However, the difference in the study population in these four antibiotic trials could not be compared in many aspects. The data in the present study do not support the important role of roxithromycin in secondary prevention of acute coronary syndrome as reported by Gerfinkel et al. A patient treated with roxithromycin for a period of 30 days did not show a significant reduction in the occurrence of major cardiovascular event compared with the placebo group. There are at least two possible explanations for the findings of the present study. First, roxithromycin, through its anticlamidial activity, may reduce but not completely eliminate the organism within atherosclerotic plaque. Gfers et al. reported that C. pneumonia infection in circulating human monocytes is refractory to azithromycin or rifampine treatment. In this regard, prevention of vascular infection by ambiclamidial treatment may be problematic. Because circulating monocytes carrying a pathogen with reduced antimicrobial susceptibility might initiate reinfection or promote atherosclerosis. Secondly, although roxithromycin also has anti-inflammatory activity, the data in the present study do not demonstrate this effect. Summary in the present study of 84 ACS patients followed up for 90 days, a one-month course of roxithromycin was not associated with an overall reduction in cardiovascular events compared with placebo. Further large-scale trials are required to assess the potential role of antibiotic therapy in CAD patients before this regimen will be the standard treatment in cardiac patients in the future. Acknowledgements This study was supported by a grant from Sairi Raj Grant for Research Development and Medical Education No. 75-248-385. The authors wish to thank Hoaxed Marion Roussel, Thailand, for supplying the roxithromycin and placebo tablets.